I am just getting ready to do my 10 minute incline warm up on the treadmill. But today I wanna to do something a little bit different for you guys. I had reached out to Instagram and YouTube a couple weeks ago and asked, hey, what are some things that you guys wanna see? And, oh my God, I look so tired. And one of the suggestions was, how do you make traditional quad exercises more glute focused or what are some different glute exercises other than you know your traditional bridges hip thrusts things like that so i want to show you guys how i modify just tiny tweaks to form how i modify some more traditional quad or hamstring focused exercises and some cues to look forward to so you're hitting more glute so i think i have i think i just wrote seven exercises on the board um, and I might even think of some more when I when I uh, film this so um, I want to go through that and I'll do a little voiceover as well so you get the cues and yeah that's gonna be my workout this morning Elliot's getting ready to go um, to work all right what's going on guys welcome to another commentary here so for this workout I just decided to do my normal work, uh, warm up here where I just picked about two to three exercises to open up the hip abductors and get those glutes nice and warm. So I started with regular fire hydrants. I did 10 per side and then at 10 I switched into these fire hydrant slash kickback type variation. So I'm kind of keeping my hip there at a 90 degrees uh, and pulling it back and then kind of pointing my heel like I'm pushing it to the farther outside corner of like a box. Um, so I did 10 of regular and then 10 of these modified fire hydrants per side. And I did about two, I think maybe three sets of this entire circuit. And then I went ahead for the second exercise and did three times 20 banded bridges. Now in this workout, I'm not doing any other sort of bridge or uh, hip thrust here. So I really just focused on opening up my hip abductors here, which is why I'm pressing my knees gently outside on the band here as I'm squeezing the glutes up at the top and pushing through my heels. So I did feel a nice little activation in the glutes here. And then I finished the circuit off with uh, 20 per leg here banded clamshells. And the goal is to keep your heels touching and I'm just focusing on my abductors moving that band back and forth. Now these are tough because that band is tight, but this was a really great warm up. Okay, the first exercise here is your American deadlift. Now, typically you might feel these in your even your lower back or your hamstrings, but the variation here is a lighter weight. So I'm using a lighter weight. I'm standing with my feet just outside shoulder width and I'm really focusing on the hinge movement here. And then as you can see, I'm squeezing up at the top. So this makes it more of a glute dominant variation. The second exercise is your standard barbell back squat, but what I'm doing to change this to make it be less quad focused is I'm standing in more of like a sumo wide stance. This will vary depending upon your genetics and your height, uh, but I go slightly outside shoulder width and I turn my toes about 45 degrees and then again I'm sitting back into my squat. Almost like I'm going to lose balance because my weight is in my heels, but as I come up, I'm gonna squeeze those glutes up at the top and I feel this way more in my glutes than I would my quads. The third exercise I wanna show you is a curtsy split squat. So I've shown this before, but it's not a curtsy lunge. Um, so the goal here again is I'm sitting into the weight of my front heel. I'm only putting about 30% of my weight in the back leg there and then I'm really driving through that front heel and squeezing both glutes up at the top. Now another variation is to do this on the Smith machine and I actually feel more glute uh, contraction, more activation when I do these curtsy split squats on the Smith machine. I think it's because I'm taking the balance aspect out of it and I can actually just focus on driving the weight through my heel. So give it a try and you can see which one works best for you. Okay, the next exercise is a Bulgarian split squat. Now, the cues here are I'm almost leaning forward a little. So my knee is not traveling over my over my toe because I don't want to hurt my knees, but I am leaning more forward and sitting my hip back. So my right hip is kind of set back more, um, and I'm almost leaning over that. Th this is a better variation or a better angle here. So. As you can see, I'm getting a lot more glute and again, pushing through that front heel, but leaning a little bit more forward to focus more on glutes than I am quads. 
Okay, and here is a dumbbell um, goblet squat here, and my heels are elevated. Now, usually this is gonna mean that you're gonna focus more on quads, but I actually find this is a great cue for me to stand with my heels elevated to focus on sitting my hips back. So my shins are more perpendicular to the floor here. I'm not focused on my quads. I'm driving through my heels so I could actually lift up my toes. Uh, and so I'm going a little bit lighter here and I'm keeping my knees pressed apart. I'm not even wearing a band, but my knees are still pressed apart. If they cave in, you might feel this more in your quad. Okay, this variation of a kickback is a quad drooped. So I'm not actually super dramatic here, but instead of going more straight leg, I'm almost kicking back like a pendulum here. And I'm driving that heel back and up. That's gonna give me more activation in the glute maximus. Um, and I'm not arching my back. So that's really the key here, guys. I'm focusing more on driving my glute around my pelvis and using that as like a pendulum. Um, so the cues here are more to push back and up and really focus on just keeping that, that pelvis nice and stable. Okay, I love this exercise for the glutes um, and for that underbutt kind of area. This is a vertical leg press on the Smith machine. Now the goal here is when you come back down, your lower back should actually touch the ground. Um, you might not be able to get your legs all the way down. As you can see, I don't have a full range of motion because I'm not as flexible here. Um, but this is gonna, you're gonna squeeze through your heels up at the top and pull your butt and lower back off the floor. Add a little band here and press your knees apart to even add further challenge. Done with that workout and I can already tell you guys I'm gonna be sore tomorrow because my legs were shaking on that last one. Um, but those are just a couple um, exercises that are, you can modify your stance. Pretty much like all of them are just the way your foot stance is and or I go super lightweight on some of those exercises because I feel it more in my glutes. Whereas if I try to go too heavy, what happens is, is my quads, which are stronger than my glutes, will take over the movement. So a lot of it is like gauging. Like I remember, I don't know, three, four years ago, I was like hip thrusting 350 pounds. But when I look back on that, my form wasn't right. So I was using a lot more hamstring and even quad to get that much weight up. Um, I, my glutes weren't that strong. So I've actually peeled back my glute workouts um, in terms of uh, weight to really get the, the mind to muscle connection there. And I kind of used my pregnancy to do that because I couldn't, you know, after I get to a certain um, further along in my pregnancy, I couldn't put like a heavy uh, hip thrust bar or a heavy glute bridge bar um, across my pelvis, obviously. So I was doing a lot more banded stuff, which obviously was lighter weight. Uh, and I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna lose all my glutes, but I didn't because I was really focused on that mind to muscle connection. And then even postpartum, I've really not increased my weight a ton because I feel that glute contraction. Now, let's say I'm doing banded um, glute bridges. I will do maybe 20, 30, 40 glute bridges to really feel that activation versus if I were to add a barbell with a band, I might do 15, 20-ish um, because I, I don't wanna lose my form. I could keep repping it out, sure, but my quads or my hamstrings are gonna take over. So it's really, really important to establish that mind to muscle connection if you wanna hit your glutes because a lot of people they don't realize that like oh I'm squatting this much well yeah you're squatting super super heavy because your quads and your hamstrings are taking over versus what you guys saw here I think I had 75 pounds on the bar and that's not very heavy but the way that I was in a sumo stance there and sitting back into my squat I wanted to go lighter to hit all glutes throughout that range of motion my dogs are barking they're gonna wake up Remy Anyways, it's about 7.15, so I'm gonna go get in the shower uh, before Remy gets up, and then we'll probably go on a little uh, walk before it gets too hot, because it's still the triple digits here. All right, I'll check in with you guys later. Good morning. Can you say hi? Can you say hi, Remy? Uh, the other day, I'll insert a clip here, but the other day, she grabbed my phone because she always tries to grab our cell phones. Obviously, she can't get into them or anything like that, so don't mom shame me. Oh my God, kids on your cell phone. She likes to hold the cell phone, but she was talking to it or like getting really excited with it. And I showed that video to my family and they were like, you know what she's doing, right? She's mimicking mom when she talks to her phone. And I was like, that's exactly what she's doing. I don't know if I should be worried or if that's just the times, but yeah, that is what I do for a living. So anyways, 
she got up a little bit ago and we just finished breakfast. She actually ate a lot. She ate half of my eggs and then she ate a frozen waffle. She wouldn't, didn't want me to warm it up. She pulled it out of the freezer and then she ate it. There we go, hi! So right now, excuse this mess, but this is what our current living room looks like. So we got, we had these two chairs. I ordered two to see if I liked them, the two end chairs, and I love them. These chairs are so much bigger. They're so nice. So I ordered six yesterday, and my husband put them together last night. This is the table base, but we're still missing the top. So currently, this is what my living room, or my dining room looks like. Yes, this is the rocking chair, and I have another one that I need to put together right now. Um, and then it came with that little table right there. There's not really good light in here, but this is the little table that goes between them. So, I got one done yesterday before I had to cook dinner. And then I'm gonna do the other one right now. Yes, Bug? What do you think, Ram? Good job? High five? Good job! Let's see. Let's see if I keep them there. We're going to keep. I would update you guys here. Um, so, it's about two, almost three o'clock. Holy cow, where's the day going? Um, so, I didn't really pick up my camera. And I started this project. So, Remy's birthday is actually this Friday. So, this coming Saturday, a week from today, I'm actually hosting her birthday party here. And I'm just doing family, um, my family, Elliot's family. So, but still, there's like 20 people coming. So, hopefully, our kitchen table gets here before then. Uh, but I have. I may have gone a little bit too overboard on decoration decorations. I don't really have a theme. It was just gonna be pink, and then I just kept buying things. So here's currently what I'm doing. So I'm like laying everything out and seeing what I have. So I like have different balloons here. Um, I don't know where that whole other pack of balloons just went. Oh, I, oh, these ones, because these are the ones that need to be blown up like the day of her birthday. Um, so I have all of these. These are little hearts. Um, some table decorations, things like that, banners, um, and then I actually did, I printed off her birth like every single year, one month, two months, and it'll go on this cute little banner. This is stuff to make her cupcakes with. I'm gonna try to do fondant and put ones on all of her cupcakes. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then I got these cute little, like she's gonna wear these, but maybe one picture she'll wear them. We'll see. Um, and then plates and cups and napkins and a high chair. Um, and then I just put these together. Yes, I know they're backwards, but um, I was going to say one right here. So I've been putting those together. Did you find mom's chapstick? You found mommy's chapstick? It must have fallen out of my pocket just now. Okay. But <laughs> Remy has been unbelievably fussy and needy today. So. All of these projects are taking a little bit longer than they probably should, but... Alright, we're gonna go change the scenery and go upstairs. And Mom has some essential oils she needs to make, so... Are you helping Mommy? Woo, not really. It's almost nap time. But I'm really excited about this new box for all of my oils. My husband will be happy that I'm organizing my witchcraft. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go lay down. Okay, I'm back. I had to go put her down. She's very fussy and she basically took a whole bottle and is completely asleep. So, I'm going to get all of my oils. I guess this, this box that I ordered on Amazon is a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, this is huge. So my husband's gonna be happy because right now I just have all of my oils on my bedside table and in my drawer, but they're here because my diffuser for our room is in there. 
and I just put in an order or I got my new order of oils this week and so I just have all my bottles sitting right here and Elliot was like you need to do something about the witchcraft on your bedside table so and I didn't even realize that the box came with these like cute little um, labels too that you can put on the top so you can see them so I want to show you guys what I got and I have a whole bunch of new recipes so I'm gonna make a couple of the recipes as well Okay, so it seemed like a lot more that I had when I was sitting there, but this thing is just so big. So I actually put the little stickers on, and then like what didn't have stickers I wrote. So like my On Guard, my Deep Blue, and this is like one of my favorites to diffuse at night. It's like, oh, it's amazing. Um, and then I have nice little rollers here um, that I made. This is the Hormone one, Sleep one. This is one I made for sore muscles using some of the Deep Blue. Um... And then this is the frankincense I just reordered. Guys, I cannot recommend frankincense enough. Um, I rub it on my feet before bed. I love it. So I'm finishing up this one, and then I just ordered a second one. So, oh, I actually went and printed off a bunch of these different recipes. So I actually didn't order a lot of the fall blends in this order just because I'm slowly trying to increase my... They're expensive, guys. Um, so I don't know if I can make any of these right now. Um, here's the liquid sleep one this one at night the lavender the wild orange and the frankincense um i didn't order vet verb so i don't have that one but i do have this one the calming sleep i could do that one um these are cleaning ones that i really wanted to order so i actually am slowly increasing how much i have of these i have the purify downstairs actually that's what i was diffusing so i have one two three four five six seven for my cleaning blends um, oh, how to, when you're not feeling great, oregano, on guard, and frankincense, um, oregano, lemon, and peppermint for a blocked nose, clean the air, so I can actually make almost all of these, I think, except for this one and this one, based on the oils that I had, so, and then this was the one that I was looking at, so I want to make the veggie spray, which is right here with grapefruit, lemon, and distilled water, um, to a spray bottle, a little bit of baking soda, so actually I'm going to make that today. And then I wanted to make the, um, it looks like a de-stress spray. Yeah, so I really wanted to do that one and the odor eliminator. Um, yeah, this one. I'm going to put that one in Remy's room, lavender, lemon, and wild orange. So yeah, I want to um, make some of those and just kind of keep everything a little bit more organized in my folder here. I think I showed you guys that before, so... I've really gotten into making these oils. Oh, and then I did, um, because they, there's like conflicting things online about using oils on little kids, but there's, once she turns a year, it seems like I can use a little bit more oils with children. So I did buy Remy some roller oils um, that I'll probably wait to talk to the pediatrician about and make sure like she's okay with everything. So these are super cute, you guys. Look, they're like little colored oils the little roller bottles so i thought they were super cute um remy's gonna be a year and she doesn't have any teeth yet but there's a nice teething blend one there's one for upset tummy um so i i don't know <laughs> i don't know i mean i'd rather treat my kid holistically if i can before i give her like tylenol and stuff i'm not opposed to it but i just feel like if you can do it holistically i mean why not um my next order order that'll go out in October I have like all the fall scents so I decided not to do it on this scent because it's still 105 degrees outside so I was like I'm not gonna diffuse apple cider and pumpkin spice right now because it's not fall it's still freaking summer so my October order will have um, like the clove and the cinnamon bark and the ginger and the harvest spice so that order will be in probably mid-October so anyways, I'm going to make a couple of these sprays. I have all my glass bottles. Um, this is a purifying room spray, but I want to do an odor eliminator for Remy's room. Um, her diaper pail is not bad, but, you know, just to get rid of some of those little stinks and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that. Um, there you go. Okay, I wanted to discuss something that I get asked about quite a bit. And again, when I reached out and asked you guys certain topics that you wanted me to touch on in these vlogs, this was one of them that came up. So... Um, some of you guys may know or may not know that I think I 
I competed three times. So I've competed in fitness. Um, I actually was in the bikini division. I competed in 2015 for the first time here in Arizona at a regional show. I took first place, which qualified me to go to nationals. So then the following year in 2016, I did two national shows, once in, one in Chicago and one in Las Vegas. So, um, and then I kind of quit my um, bodybuilding career and I'll kind of talk about that too. So one of the questions I get a lot because I, tr I coach um, predominantly women, but I do coach men is, you know, you want, everybody wants to look like a, a competitor. You know, you want to have those nice full muscles. You want to be super lean. You want to be shredded all the time. And they're like, okay, so how do I get that? And what's the difference between that and then what we call like a lifestyle client? Um, so I want to touch on that for a second. I actually went through some old emails and some old coach emails, uh, some old emails from my coach, some old plans that I was going to share with you guys as well to kind of go over the training aspect, the food aspect, um, and things like that. But first and foremost, the fitness industry, the bodybuilding industry is not the same as the health industry. It's not. And we always think like, oh my God, that person's so lean. That person's so lean and fit. Um, they, they must be so freaking healthy. You're not. Being that lean is not healthy. It's not sustainable. And I think that's what everybody kind of has to get through their mind. First of all, yeah, it looks, you look really cool on stage, but I only look like that for maybe I don't you're only on stage for like 30 seconds and then you go and you drink water and you eat some food after the show and you feel back out and you look more normal um so that look is not sustainable and I think that's where a lot of people kind of their their mindset gets a little warped they're like wait I want to look like that but it's not sustainable long term um it's it's a complete lifestyle change it's a complete commitment and i'm talking about like i packed my meals everywhere i went i didn't eat with the family we if we went to family meals i packed my own food i had my food scale you didn't go out to eat i mean it was to the t yes you were tracking macros but you were so precise that you weren't you, you don't even go to re you don't eat out at restaurants you don't everything is literally to the gram um on top of that I have one I have one workout right here and I was training one, two, three, four, five. I have six days of training plus 260 minutes of cardio a week. Okay. And now as a mother, I don't have time for that shit. I, I don't have time to put in that type of work. Um, and that was just to get my body to respond. So I actually have an old macro plan in here too. So when I did the national show in June of 2016, I was with one coach and he had my macros at 170 protein, 75 carbs and 40 fat. Yeah. So that was about 1300 calories. So then six weeks later, I wanted to compete in a different show, but I moved on to a different coach. I actually started coaching with Amber, who I work for now. And she was like, oh my, we, we have to reverse diet you, but we only have six weeks. And so she really tried to bring my intake up before it came back down. But my intake going into my second show was 150 pr uh, protein. So it came down 120 carbs. So it came up and 30 grams of fat. So it came down um, and it was still at 1350 calories. So I was competing super, super low. And I remember she was like, we're just going to do this temporary because what happens when your intake, your, if you're eating 1300 calories, your metabolism eventually adapts to 1300 calories. It's a survival mechanism that your body does so that you're not burning more than you're taking in. So yes, if you're eating 2000 calories and, and, and you drop down to 1500 in the beginning, you're going to lose weight, but your metabolism is eventually going to adapt. So when it adapts, you plateau, you don't lose weight anymore. So people think, okay, I'm at 1300. I got to go down to 12. I got to go down to 11. I got to go down to a thousand calories. Your metabolism adapts, but what happens is you usually don't even drop any more weight because you're so far depleted that your body actually starts holding on to that intake because it thinks it's not going to get any more food for fuel. So what happens is, is these competitors get so you know, they're, they're so spot on with their, their diet, their, their intake, their metabolism gets super, super, super low. They're done with the show and they're like, I'm going to go eat pizza and drink beer. And boom, now all of a sudden their metabolism is used to burning a thousand. They've already shot up to 2000, 3000, thrown them into a caloric surplus and they pack on weight. Not only that, but your hormones are like, what, the, what is going on? Um, it's not sustainable long term, and so it's and it's a giant commitment because then once after I did the show, I had to reverse diet slowly, and we started from 1350 calories, and I had to slowly get back out of there and slowly taper down my cardio, um, and my and my training plan as well. 
so it's I mean it's a huge commitment it's a complete lifestyle change like I was in the gym guys I remember being in the gym I'd go early in the morning I woke up at 3 30 to get going to the gym before I worked all day and then I'd go to the gym again on my lunch break and then sometimes I would hit it again after work um complete lifestyle change so it really is a commitment um I'm, I'm talking shit about it and I don't mean to be, um, it's just there's a lot of things that you have to think about before you start and you, you take that leap and you take that commitment. You know, a lot of my clients are like, well, I want to ba be balanced. That's fine. I totally want that for my lifestyle clients. I promote flexible dieting. I want you to fit treats into your macros. But if you're competing, it's a completely different ballgame. That balance goes straight out the window. There is no balance. Um, you have to be regimented, especially coming into a show. You have to be strict. You have to be diligent. Um, it means that, yeah, you're on macros, but you don't get to fill it with bullshit. You have to stick to certain foods. Um, so that is really the difference that it, when it comes to competing and then what I call like the lifestyle clients. And don't get me wrong. Lifestyle clients are still, are still dropping weight, but they have a little bit more balance. They have a little bit more flexibility. Realize that they're not getting down to that super shredded um, saran wrap look because again, that's not sustainable. And I think sometimes I've had to talk to clients where they're like, hey, this is the look I'm going for. And I was like, okay, but you want to be able to go out to dinner with your husband on Saturday nights. You want to be able to have that glass of wine a couple nights a week the look you're looking for, that's not conducive to the type of lifestyle that you're living right now. And that's okay. Like that's, that's not how I want to live anymore. So I'm not saying that, but sometimes I have to kind of say, Hey, if this is the way you're looking and you're not going to be happy until you look like this is your goal to look and you're not going to be happy until you look that way, then we need to kind of reassess what's important in your life. Because for me, family outings, gatherings, social events, um, you know, I'll be spending time with my daughter. I can't be in the gym three hours a day. Like that, that's not, I can't do it. I mean, even me getting up at 5 a.m. to get an hour long workout is, is tough. Um, so it really comes down to, you know, why are you doing this? I've reversed, I've cut, I've reversed, I've cut. Like I've done so many things even in the lifestyle change, but it's almost like, okay, I'm not willing to do more than an hour long workout. If I have to increase cardio, I kind of shift my lifts a little bit to get a little bit more cardio in. Um, maybe add 15 minutes here, maybe do more walks outside if I'm trying to cut down. Um, but even when I cut for photo shoots, like a photo shoot look isn't the same look as stage lean. Okay, they're, they're different. Um, and I'm okay with that. I also maintain a pretty lean physique year round. Um, and I do that with flexible dieting. Um, I'm happy. Do I look like the way I looked when I walked on stage? No. But that's okay because I want to live the lifestyle that I'm living and I like the balance that I have right now. Um, I fit in treats every once in a while. I'm not saying every once in a while. I choose not to drink. I really don't drink. Um, I think that's part of the reason I'm, I'm able to maintain a leaner physique than when I was drinking more. Um, I do work out. I stay as active as I can even though I'm parked behind this desk the majority of the work week. Um, but I do try to stay as active as I can and I'm, you know, whole foods and things like that. Um, then when I went from, you know, um, lifestyle to postpartum, that changed even more because there were certain things that I couldn't do. Um, I was limited on, I was really limited on timing and I was super, super, super tired. So I even went down from, I think literally leading up to my pregnancy, I worked out the day I delivered. And I think I was going to the gym five or six days a week, whether or not I was just walking or lifting. Um, but I was still on the five or six days a week at the gym. Um, during my pregnancy and then postpartum I didn't go to the gym or work out at all the first six weeks until I got cleared and then after that it was it was probably three four trying to get back started to walk more because it was cooler at the time she was born in October um, and that was a complete mind warp for me too because mind you I had gained um, I gained 23 pounds during pregnancy I had lost a lot of muscle, so I looked different. Um, but again, I focused more on my nutrition. Even though I wanted to train as hard as I could, I knew that that wasn't feasible at the moment. Um, and so I really focused on keeping stressors down. Um, and this is what I say to my postpartum mamas. I shifted it from, I gotta get in the gym, I gotta work out to it, I gotta lose all this baby weight. I shifted it more to, hey, I'm not getting a lot of sleep, I have a newborn, um, I'm breastfeeding it's demanding a lot out of me so how do I reduce stressors I cut down on the high impact workouts even though I wanted you so bad I realized my body's not going to respond it's already stressed out you know I have this newborn I'm waking up every two three hours I'm you know producing breast milk for this child um, and so I changed my training yet again and I focus more on 
banded workouts and walking and lower impact stuff, which was a total, like I said, total mind fuck because I was like, this isn't gonna do anything, but it did. And I lost the baby weight, I think in four or five months. Um, my body looked different, mind you. I had more fat than I did lean muscle mass and I, st I still think I do, um, but it's a process <laughs> and it took nine months. And so I've been a lot, um, I really think pregnancy taught me more about, hey, it's not about the gym. It, it really did come down to nutrition and I knew me eating a bunch of junk and cookies and McDonald's, ugh, ugh, I don't even know the last time I went through a drive-thru, um, isn't gonna make me feel any better, so it's not gonna make my baby feel any more, better. Same thing postpartum. I was so tired. Guys, if I would've just caved, oh my God, I could just, let's just run through Starbucks and get whatever mocha choco lattes on the special. I don't even care, I just feel so sh shitty. If I did that, I would feel even shittier. And so I made it a point to meal prep. I made it a point to continue to eat healthy. Um, and I really think that that has changed my mindset and looked more at it as a lifestyle. Um, versus, oh my God, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm dieting all the time or I'm always going to the gym because I'm going to get fat. I really have changed my mindset to, I just want to feel good and I want this to be sustainable long term and, and do what works for you. I'm not bang, I'm not talking shit about the competitor, the bodybuilding industry at all. I'm just saying that if you do get into it, it is a complete commitment and a complete lifestyle change. It's very different. Um, I think my husband caught that it was warping my mind, um, more than anything and I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna compete again because who knows maybe when I'm done having all my kids I'll be like hey I'm gonna do it stage come back but I know what rabbit hole I can go down and I will be more mindful of that um, and hopefully have a really high metabolism to where maybe I can walk on stage eating 18 1900 calories you never know so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe comment below maybe your favorite part of the video and I will see you guys all in my next vlog, I'm going to crawl in bed. Remy's asleep. It's this mama's bedtime. All right, guys, I'll see you guys all in my next vlog. Good night.